If you want to shoot lower scores and become a better golfer, then you need to improve your wedge play. So today I'm going to give you my top three tips to help you hit your wedge shots closer to the hole. My first key to helping you improve your wedge play is understanding where your weight needs to be throughout the whole swing. Now, if we think about the majority of wedge shots that we hit, we're not using a full swing. So we're using something like a three quarter swing or a half swing. So in this situation, because they're shorter swings, we simply don't have the same amount of time to shift our weight back to our lead side in the downswing. So the key with these shots is that we need to preset some weight on our left side at address. So using modern day technology like force plates and pressure mats, we know that the best players in the world will roughly set up with about 70 to 80% of their weight on their lead leg. Now, like I said, this is because we have shorter swings, we don't have the same amount of time to shift back to our lead side. In reality, what we see is they are 70 to 80% of their weight on their lead leg. Now from there, the mats do tell us that they do have a little bit of shift left and right, but they never get to a position where they're on their right leg. So by setting up 70 to 80% of their weight on their left leg, and then having the swing thought of sort of staying on that left leg as they just pivot around that point, you're gonna find that although there is gonna be a little bit of weight transfer either way, you're gonna be far more consistent in hitting the ball than the ground. If you're consistent in your low point, you're then gonna have consistent strike, which then means you're gonna be far more consistent in hitting the number out there. So let me quickly show you that. I'm gonna set up 70 to 80% of my weight on my left side. I'm gonna feel like I pivot around that left leg and you're gonna see that I'm gonna have a nice ball then ground contact. So you can see, as I did that, nice clean contact, nice low flighted trajectory. From there, I'm gonna be very, very consistent in the number I'm gonna hit. So tip number two is to collect the ball and not hit at the ball. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, when I say collect the ball, it's all to do with rhythm and tempo. Now think about what we're trying to achieve with a wedge shot. We are trying to be super consistent with our strike and also super consistent in trying to hit a number out there. Whatever that number is to the flag, it might be 76 yards, 100 yards, but we're trying to be super consistent and hit it as close as possible to that yardage. Versus if we think about like a driver, we're not necessarily trying Trying to hit it a certain number. We're just trying to hit it as far and as straight as possible. So when it comes to wedges, we need to maintain a really nice smooth rhythm. This is going to give us the highest chance of being consistent with our strike and therefore our distance. So a great way of doing this is just focus on having a nice smooth tempo in your practice swings, but most importantly to get to a great follow through position. So for example, we've already gone through 80% of the weight on the front leg and you can see I'm just doing these really nice rhythmical swings where I'm just focusing on getting to to a great follow through position. There's no hit right here. And I'm just trying to keep my tempo really nice. Now, as I step into the shot, all I'm gonna do is put the weight on the left side. Then from there, I'm just gonna try and repeat that same rhythm. And it's, it's as if the club is just collecting the ball on the way through. There's no hit, there's no jerking motion towards the ball. I'm just collecting the ball on the way through. And I'm just trying to repeat the same rhythm that I've done in my practice swings just beforehand. So let me show you a good practice swing. There you go, nice smooth rhythm. Now I'm gonna step into the shot, preset my weight on the left side, and now I'm just gonna feel like I collect the ball as I hit this. And you can see as I've done that, I've gotten through to a really nice follow through position. Again, that's gonna make me a lot more consistent in my strike, and therefore that's gonna give me a way higher chance in hitting the number out there that I'm trying to hit. So the third tip is to develop a wedge matrix. Now it takes a little bit of practice, and you do need to jump onto a some sort of simulator or, or a distance device, uh, and then you'll be able to figure out how far each swing goes. But essentially what we're gonna do is have three different swings or three different lengths of swings with each wedge. So what are those three different lengths of swing? So the first one is a half swing or a hip high to hip high swing. And when we say hip high to hip high, we're talking about where the hands get. So you can see my hands roughly get to my hip, to my hip. Maybe then the next one will be a three quarter, so a shoulder to shoulder one. And then the last one will obviously be a full swing to a full swing. That one's the easiest, but the hip high and three quarter ones will need some practice. So that's what I want you to do. Go down to the driving range, set up a camera from the front on view or jump in front of a mirror if you can and just do some swings where you try and do a hip high 
to hip high swing. The first step is to record yourself and see if your hands do get to the hip high, hip high swing. You might find that they're a little bit too low or they're a little bit too high, in which case just do some, take some time and just develop it just so you can get them to a hip high, hip high swing, then practice it to make sure you get repeatable. The next step is then to do the three quarter one. So again, we're going shoulder to shoulder, video yourself, see if you naturally do it. If not, spend a little bit of time working on it so you can get it to that good yardage. Now, once you've done that and you've gotten a good hip high a good consistent shoulder high and a good consistent full swing the next step is to then go to your local pro or any sort of place where you can jump on a trap man or a gc quad or anything like that a facility essentially what you're going to do is with each wedge you're going to hit five shots with each of these swings you're going to take your average of those five shots you can take out any anomalies but you're going to take your average of those five shots and then you're going to get a number for each of those three swings with each of your wedges so if you have a three wedge system, you'll have nine yardages. If you have a four wedge system, you'll have 12 yardages. Now from there, whenever you are in that sort of wedge zone, take out that wedge matrix, look at the closest number that is to that yardage, and then from there you can hit a shot. So for example, let's just say I have a perfect 52 degree, which I've got here, 52 degree wedge, three quarter swing. I'm gonna set up to this ball and I'm gonna produce a shoulder, shoulder, three quarter swing. And let's just presume I'm already at the perfect yardage. This should finish as close to the hole as possible. So let's see how I do. So we're gonna go here, preset my weight, nice smooth tempo, shoulder, shoulder. Let's try and hit this ball nice and close. So there we go, pretty nice stride, flying pretty straight, a little bit to the left, but not too bad. Did I achieve the shoulder shoulder height? Drop it down in the comments if I did or didn't. I might need to still work on it. And if I do, what I'm gonna do is film my swing from the front of view and practice it to make sure my hands were pretty close to the shoulder shoulder height. Now, those are my three top tips for today. If you have any questions or you have anything that I haven't covered in this lesson that you wanna talk about about wedges, then drop them down below. I'll answer all your comments. And if you have any future video requests, then please again, drop it down in the comments below and I'll try, try and make as many videos as I can. If you've also enjoyed today's video, then please give it a like and a subscribe. I'm new to YouTube and I'm trying to grow it as fast as I can and help as many people as possible. So I hope to see you back here soon and I hope you've enjoyed today's video.